Thank you, Carly. So all I am doing right now is I'm uh, playing... Hi, folks. I'm practicing my major scales. How many of you can play... Uh, how many of you can play at least one major scale on your instrument? You don't have to play them that fast, but uh, good. Pythonium can play all the majors. A couple of you guys can uh, know all of them. Quiz question. Let's see. Um, who is the first person who's going to get this one right? How many major scales are there? Who can answer that question? How many major scales are there? Oh, we have a lot of guesses here. Uh, a lot of different guesses. No one's... Oh, okay. Xavier got it right. It's 12. There are 12. And actually, I was going to show you guys this last time. Um, the circle... Has, has, have any of you ever practiced with your band directors, your music teacher, something called the Circle of Fourths? Hi, everybody. Hi, awesome guy is back again. Ooh, uh, someone asked about trombone. I do have a trombone. It's in... I don't know if it's in my room here. So I'm going to show you guys with this uh, paper here. We're going to draw a circle. I need something to draw a circle that's not going to be too big. Let me try. I'll do this. It's going to be a little big. Whoops. I just drew on my hand. So I'm drawing a circle. I'm using... I'm using my can of pencils here to make a circle. So here is our circle, okay? Here is how you can memorize your scales. And this is how you can remember your scales. Does anyone know how to do the circle of fourths? We make a circle and it's like a clock. So there's 12 different keys. And just like if you look at an old style clock, not like a new clock on your phone, um, an analog clock has 12 spots on the clock for each hour of the, of the half of the day. So what we're going to do is at the top, we're going to start with a C, okay? So, good. Septic uh, Poet is giving us the right answer. So if we're going to go this way, which is clockwise, yeah, some people go circle of fifths. I like circle of fourths. Usually jazz people and band people tend to like fourths, and more orchestra strings people tend to like circle of fifths. They're actually both the same circle. Just one goes one way, one goes the other way. So um, I have a lot of people checking in who are interested in scales, so that's good. Maybe we'll, we'll learn a little bit something about scales. If we're going a fourth higher than C, we start on C with our thumb and we go up the alphabet four notes. C, D, E, F. So the next one we write is F, okay? Does anyone know what comes next? F, G, A, and the fourth is Evan, got it, it's B flat. Now that might be a little bit confusing. Why is it B flat, why isn't it just B? Well that gets a little complicated, but we'll just, just trust me that it's B flat, okay? B, and then that little weird lowercase kind of slanted B is a, is a flat symbol. B flat. Okay, next. B flat, C, D. Who's got it? What comes next after B flat? Chris got it. It's E flat. I want to make sure I write this correctly. All right. And I'm just going to continue around the circle. What comes next, guys? What comes a fourth higher than E flat? Not F. Well, F is next in the scale, but you have to count up four. E flat, F, G, 
I already wrote it. It's A flat, okay? Then it gets a little bit tricky in this part of the, the circle, so I'm just gonna write them all. A flat, we go A flat, B flat, C, D flat is next. Now we're halfway through the circle, we're at G flat. Does anyone know what the other name for G flat is? What's the other name for G flat? Then I'll do, I'll do some playing in a minute, but we're gonna get through this. Mads R got it right, it's F sharp. So what we do is we put a little slash and we're gonna put F sharp with the G flat. All right, we're gonna go through this quick. After F sharp, we, we start counting on F sharp. We go F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and see I got marker on my hand. What comes after uh, a fourth higher than F sharp is a leaping sword, got it, it's a B. Now we are on uh, the side of the circle where we're not putting any sharps or flats in the names. It's just plain old B, not B sharp. B, ready? Count up four from B as one. B, C, D. What is it? What comes after B? Someone might have already put it in there and I didn't see it. Pythonium Gaming got it, it's E. Then comes E, F, G, A. I'm gonna get through these quickly now. Fourth higher than A, A, B, C, D. A fourth higher than D, D, E, F, G. And now, magically, we see why it's a circle. What's a fourth higher than G? G, A, B, C. And we're back where we started. There's our circle of fourths, okay? So, Take a screenshot of that and use your circle of fourths to practice your scales. So we have, just play through the circle. C, F, B flat, E flat, A flat, D flat. That was all 12 notes that we have in, in music. All right, I don't wanna bore you guys. Thank you, thank you, uh, United Shoe. Uh, thank you. That it's my tenor saxophone. Uh, you know who, what I forgot to do? I forgot to welcome Dennis. Everyone say hi to Dennis, who's with us again. Hi, Dennis. Hey, how you doing, Steve? Hi, everybody. All right. So Dennis is helping us out once again, and uh, Uncle Joe is in the, uh, the the chat room also helping us out with the comments. He, I'm sure he's saying hello wherever he is. He's in the in the chat room. Um, so, Dennis is going to help me catch some of your questions and comments that I'm missing because they, all, they come through kind of quickly. So, I'm getting a lot of requests for this song, Faded. So, I'm going to have to do some research. I don't know that song. There's Uncle Joe checking in. Um, I'm going to have to do some research on that song because I don't know that song. Um, so, Dennis, why don't we jump in, and, because I haven't been noticing, are there any questions that you've noticed that would be good to tackle right well, now? What, uh, yeah, um, what, what instruments uh, are similar to, in range, to the bassoon and Barry sax? Oh, that's a good question. Um, generally, in sure. the, the bassoon, Barry sax range, we also see... Uh, trombone and euphonium and bass clarinet uh, those instruments are kind of in the same range I don't know if that that helps you know generally when you're thinking and playing in a concert band we think of uh, your director might have talked to you about a sound pyramid which is where I'm going to use this my little note paper again we draw a triangle Oh, that's not so good. Hold on. I'm going to try that one again. We do a triangle shape. And we think of the sound, the, the sections of the band as being different sections of the triangle. So down here at the bottom, we have our bass instruments like tuba, um, string bass. And then we get up into the mid-low range like our trombones and our... Um, bassoons and things like that. Mid-range, we're into our, our, our mellophones, our French horns, alto saxes, and then you get into the high range 
of your high clarinets, flutes, and oboes. So that is a good way to think about the different ranges of the ensemble. Um, let's see some other questions here. Uh, Carly, yes, I do know. Uh, I do know Kat. Um, we go back, uh, she is a fellow music teacher, and we go back a number of years. So um, here's a good question just popping up right now. Do you have any tips? This is from TTV Salty Bacon. Do you have any tips on how to keep a steady airflow when playing the flute? Yes. I've been teaching, uh, we have a summer music camp at my school, and I've been teaching some beginners this week on flute. And one of the, the, the biggest things I notice with beginner flutes, and even young flute players, is a little bit too, uh, they have trouble regulating their air because oftentimes you're letting too much air out. Clarinet player, yes, the sound pyramid, you're right. So a lot of players, if I'm trying to develop their sound, we talk about the aperture when you're blowing air. Don't think about making a big hole with your lips. That lets out too much air. I think about taking a deep, deep breath and then my lips just allow just enough of a tiny circle of air to come out that will make the sound. And that allows you to hold a note for a really long time, especially if you're a beginner, you might think that's amazing that I can hold the note for that long, but it's, it's nothing amazing, it's just I'm not opening the, the hole in my lips too much. So a beginner might go way too much air is coming out. So hopefully that helps. Dennis, can you uh, throw me a question? Yeah. <clears throat> There's a lot of people asking about you know some good tips for marching band. I think it has to do with uh, preparation and also people starting out in, the, in marching bands, uh, you know, is there some adjustment in all they have to make in their, their instruments? Yeah. So marching band, uh, guys, uh, go ahead and chime in or uh, raise your hand if you are going to be doing marching band soon. Uh, I can give you some tips for marching band. I actually teach a high school marching band. We have our band camp. Oh, people are starting to check in. Pythonium and Tornado. Uh, and United Shoe are all in marching band. Maybe a few more of you are too. Uh, so there's a couple things. Number one, I think I talked about this before. Uh, the, the hard part about marching band is, I should say the challenging part, is you have to think about so many things at once. So when we're, if you remember when you were a beginner playing an instrument, it was like so hard because you're trying to remember your embouchure, your band face, you're trying to remember how to hold it, you're trying to remember where your fingers go, you're trying to read the music and figure out what the notes mean. So when we get into high school marching band, we add like another layer to that, and that is you have to be very precise in the way you carry your body, the way you walk and march, and the way you keep in step with the beat, with your feet. Uh, and you also have to stay in formation with the rest of the people in the band and you have to know where your spot is. There's a lot going on up here. So the one big piece of advice is spend as much time. Uh, I'm going to, Dennis, I'm going to answer that circular breathing question next. Um, spend as much time as you can practicing your music in preparation for band camp and preparation for rehearsal. Because the more you have your music memorized, you can focus your attention on the proper way to stand keeping your, your good posture, how you're supposed to hold your instrument. We're much more, usually we're much more um, precise in the way we hold our instruments in marching band because we all want to look super the same, uniform. So practice your music as much as you can so you can focus on your visuals and uh, hitting you know, your formations and your drill in the marching band. I hope that helps. So someone asked me a question about circular breathing. Can anyone out there circular breathe? Does anyone know what circular breathing is? Does anyone know what circular breathing is? Yeah, 
uh, Tornado got it, Tornado KK, uh, playing and breathing at the same time. And it's like, you wonder how is that possible? Uh, matter of fact, does anyone know what the name of the person is who has the Guinness World Record for holding the longest note? And they have the world record. They're, it's a famous person who plays an instrument uh, because they were able to circular breathe and they held a note. Oh, somebody got it. All K Mix got it. It's Kenny G. A couple of you got it. Um, and he got that record, not because he has the biggest lungs of any musician. He was circular breathing. It takes a huge amount of practice and coordination to learn how to circular breathe, uh, breathe. And also it takes a lot of endurance because it's, it's mentally and physically tiring, especially on your muscles. Here's the basic idea. You ready? Not Kelpie G. Actually, I have Kelpie G. Where is he? Somebody said Kelpie G. There he is. Kelpie G lives on my uh, piano. I'm going to keep him. I'll keep him in frame for a little while. Okay. So, uh, circular breathe. The first thing you have to do when you circular breathe is you have to break one of the rules of that you learned when you were a beginner. And that is you allow your cheeks to fill up with air as you're playing. So it looks like this. And what you do is, is you hold the air in your cheeks like a chipmunk. And then the, 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 the um, coordination part is you st start breathing in through. Yeah, it's Squidward, but wasn't Squidward Kelpie G? In, uh, when he had, a, he had a, a wig on, he was Kelpie G. Um, what you have to do is you have to breathe in through your nose while you force the air in your cheeks through the mouthpiece, okay? So it's like doing this. You, you squeeze your cheeks and you breathe in. Okay? So here we go. Oh, okay. I, do I have it wrong? I thought he was just Kelpie G in, uh, in disguise. Okay, maybe I'm wrong about that. Ready? So here we go. not super good at it like you can hear the seams when I switch over to my breathing in through my nose you can kind of hear my sound gets wobbly so that's something to get good at circular breathing you have to practice a ton to get it to sound seamless okay uh, Dennis is chiming in with some uh, some of your questions as you can see uh, as Dennis follows your questions when he picks out a question that he thinks uh, would be good for me to answer he will uh, put it back up in the chat. So I saw two of them come through, Dennis. Were they both the same? No, 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 they were different. The app? Same guy though, same person. Xavier okay, Alexander. so uh, Xavier first Alexander, what, what's that? It said the first one is, do you use mellows or marching horns and contras okay. or sousaphone? All right, good question, Xavier. I'll answer that one first. We use mellophones and we use, well, we have, marching tubas and we have a Sousa. So we're trying to uh, get funding to even out our, uh, our low brass so we have all Sousa phones. So we're still working on purchasing those. And then the other one was from Xavier is, do you use the, uh, the app or dot sheets? So we don't currently use the, the phone app. There's some marching bands that have an app, you have to pay for it, where the, all the kids in the band can see their, their drill sheets and their dots on the app. It's like super cool. But um, we're, we're not doing that this year. It takes a little bit of setup time and you have to make sure everyone has the app and you have to pay for a subscription. So we're not doing that. Do you guys use uh, that app? Because let me know how you like it. If you like the app. Um, do, 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 do. Let's see. Um, All K Mix is asking, do I own a soprano sax? Do I have any tips for getting low notes out fluidly? So getting uh, low notes out on soprano sax for me is no different than any other saxophone. Because if you're having trouble, uh, Hilkia, I'm going to come to you next. Can you ask me something about trombone and I can answer it? Um, I'll, I'll answer a trombone question. Um, so the thing about saxophone is when you're getting lower, 
you have to have an O-shaped embouchure and you open up your jaw a little wider and that allows the notes to come out. So, um... You have to open up or else the low notes will not work. Okay. Um, Dennis, you have yep. a question about bass clarinet. Right. Um, one thing I think really, so Hannah just started on bass clarinet and is asking, do I have any tips to get the high notes on bass clarinet? I'm going to move Squidward over here. Um, so high notes, especially on bass clarinet, it's very important to think about your voicing. Voicing means the way you shape the inside of your mouth when you play, particularly your tongue. So if you say, ah, your tongue is flat. And if you say, e, your tongue kind of comes up in the back, like arches up in the back, ah, e. And the e shape is going to help you with your high notes, okay? So it's all the normal things of making sure you have a good read, making sure your read is on straight, making sure you're using proper embouchure, correct embouchure for clarinet, but also that the voicing, the, the way you're shaping your tongue and the inside of your mouth, ah, more for low notes, e for high notes, uh, and also you wanna make sure your bass clarinet doesn't have any leaks or problems with it. If you have problems with your instrument, it's gonna be really hard for high notes. So I hope that helps. Uh, Ankh Ankh Mix says, I play tenor. Oh, okay. My dad is letting, your dad is letting you use his soprano for a solo, not used to playing such a high instrument. Yeah, going from tenor to soprano, a lot of professionals double tenor sax, soprano sax. It's a much firmer embouchure or it just feels tighter because you have to go on a smaller mouthpiece. So it, you really have to work on your muscles. My best advice is just practice long tones, long notes on soprano sax every day and use a tuner. Soprano sax is notoriously difficult to play in tune, okay? So practice with a tuner on your soprano sax. Okay, Lucas says uh, he has to leave. Sorry to see you go, Lucas. Uh, thanks for being here. Oh, you know what, guys, before, I'm gonna answer some more questions. Um, I wanted to show you, I don't know if you guys saw my latest video. Uh, by the way, uh, Old Town Road for clarinet and flute are coming this week. Well, clarinet is probably gonna be done tonight, okay? Um, my new announcement, my new video, is I have a, uh, a Patreon channel, so or a page, I guess you would call it. So there it is, I, I link to it uh, on my video. If you guys don't know what Patreon is, it is a website where people can help uh, YouTube creators uh, keep building content by becoming members and uh, helping to uh, contribute at different levels to, to help make more videos happen. Now, as I say in my um, video for this thing, of course, I know a lot of you guys out there uh, are kids. So um, obviously, if you're a, a kid, you're not, you shouldn't go on the computer and start sending money to people. But uh, I know there's music teachers out there. There are adults who like what I do. So if you want to check out what is involved on uh, this page, there's these cool, let me see where you guys can see this better. Uh, it's kind of hard to see. Um, what if I did that? Oh, well, you're going to have to look on, oh, there we go. That's kind of better. So you scroll down and you look at all the different um, perks that you get. One of them is you get access to some uh, exclusive updates on my Patreon. Uh, you can get your name in my, my video credits and things like that. So check that out. All right. Uh, Dennis, is there a, another question that I can jump to? Yeah, I can jump. Is there any uh, tuning apps you recommend for alto saxes? Yep, I just saw that. Um, I'm looking on my iPad here. There's an awesome app I recommend. A lot of band directors like this app called Atonal Energy. Uh, I, I don't think I have it. The one that I like to use is uh, called Bandmate Chromatic Tuner. And I'm trying to see if I have it 
on my, uh, oh darn, it, it needs to download. Oh, here we go. So I'm downloading it now. It's called Bandmate Chromatic Tuner. And what you do is you select, man, I gotta get my iPad so you guys can see it better. It's kind of giving me trouble. But anyway, you select your instrument on this first page and then it gives you a tuner. It actually tells you what note you're playing and tells you whether you're flat or sharp. So Band Mate Chromatic Tuner, it's free, okay? Uh, Nicholas5476, what is the best advice for tonguing a scale, I lost it, tonguing a scale fast and on time for saxophone? All right, here is the secret for playing anything that you wanna be able to play, scales, your music for band, um, an etude, a solo. The secret to playing something fast is you have to slow it down and play it super slow, okay? Um, so if you wanna do a scale fast, uh, Hilkia Constant, I don't know if I'm saying your, your username right, Thanks, Hugo. I, I didn't know how to fix the brightness on my iPad. I'll try it again. Um, Hilke, I know you really want me to do some trombone, baritone stuff. I don't have my trombone with me. If you check in next week, uh, I will definitely have a trombone to play for you, okay? So just join me at the next live stream. Actually, next live stream, next week, guys, I'm probably not gonna have a live stream because I'm gonna be on a little vacation. I'm gonna be going to New Orleans for a weekend, and maybe I'll show you guys some video from that. We'll have, I'll show you some of the fun stuff I see down there. But, uh, Hilkia, I definitely wanna help you out. I don't want you to feel left out. I will do some trombone. I have some trombone beginner videos coming up. It's gonna be posted very soon. So, thank you, Hannah. What was I in the middle of there, Dennis? I was about to talk about, oh, tonguing. Um, so, anything you wanna do fast, you have to do it slow. Here's a G scale. So that's relatively medium. Ta, ti, 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 ta. Set a metronome. Then you do a little faster. I'm starting to get a little bit too fast there. Um, you're gonna eventually hit a wall where you just can't go any faster without messing up. That means you stay there, the next day you come back to it, and you just try to push a little more. Sometimes your, your muscles in your brain has to sleep on it, and then you wake up the next day and you can push a little farther, push a little farther. So take your time. Okay, um, someone just asked, uh, can you show us the, so Alfie Redmond asked, can I show you, Jordan, I see your question. Dennis, can you remind me about Jordan's question about practicing clarinet, if you see okay. it? Okay, um, I got it. The most expensive instrument that I have, all right, I think I've told this story before. I'm gonna show you the most expensive instrument I have, okay? Here it is. I don't know if you guys watched my any of my live streams when I had my beloved soprano saxophone, but this is uh, one of my prized possessions because I purchased it when I was on a, uh, a trip to France. I went to the original uh, Selmer factory. So if you play saxophone, you are you should know what a Selmer is because uh, they are the most famous, one of the most famous uh, uh, saxophone manufacturers. So this is probably the most expensive instrument I own. Uh, it is a sort of a custom, isn't it, doesn't it nice? Yeah, so the really cool part about it is it is, so the, the real sort of hip popular finish on saxophones the past 15, 20 years has been this sort of not shiny, lacquer, it's called a matte finish. So this one has what they call a matte silver body and then matte gold keys. So it was like, to me, I just thought it was so cool when I saw it and it was it was pretty expensive. It was mm, 
it was around eight thousand dollars, which is expensive for a saxophone. Um, if you play violin or something like that, they get way more expensive than that. So violin players, uh, string players, don't have any sympathy for me on that one. Um, so the clarinet question. Uh, practicing over the summer, you could get um, something like this. Where's my clarinet books? Oh, this is a cool book. This is a cool book for clarinet. It's called the Artie Shaw Jazz Technique. I bought this when I was in high school. Artie Shaw is, is one of the most famous jazz clarinet players. And you can just find fun books like this where you're just learning to challenge yourself something different, something with jazz. Or you could get a book where you're, you're learning maybe popular songs on clarinet or Disney songs or movie themes just to keep yourself playing over the summer. If you really want to challenge yourself, you would want to get a book of like uh, classical etudes like the Rosé, R-O-S-E. Rosé etudes are probably the mo one of the most standard books of etudes for clarinet. Okay, so I see this question came up a few times about slap tonguing on the bass clarinet. Okay, so slap tonguing is a technique that is pretty similar on any reed instrument. I have not worked too much on slap tonguing. I, I just know that it's kind of like if you make that sound, that real harsh sort of push of your tongue off of the roof of your mouth, that you can make that happen on an instrument. And I'm just curious. Oh, Auk Mix can slap tongue. That's cool. Maybe you should make a tutorial so you can teach us how to do it if you, if you have learned. Um, there's probably tutorials out there. It's like I'm putting my tongue on it and I'm kind of going but but like real sort of pressure. You're just kind of slapping the reed by pushing off of it with the tongue. So do you have, um, I'm curious if you have in your band, are you supposed to slap tongue on the bass clarinet for some reason? That's a very unusual technique. So we are actually close to the end of our live stream. We're, we're over our, uh, our 30 minutes. Um, so, oh, I'll answer this other question. Hugo has been asking, do I play Sousa? You mean sousaphone? Uh, I like to play around on the sousaphone. Like I said, we just bought one at the high school uh, and it's fun to play, but I'm not particularly good at tuba because you really have to, I mean, playing, I can do okay on trumpet. I can do okay on trombone with my students. Tuba takes up so much air, I, I need to practice it more, but it's a lot of fun. Um, okay, so uh, guys, I am getting ready to uh, check out of our live stream today, but I wanna have you uh, take a look at my channel, uh, check out my uh, Patreon video so you can learn more about that. Check out my uh, clarinet, Old Town Road, which is coming up. I'm gonna to try to have that posted tonight. I have some new beginner videos coming up on for beginner trombone with my special guest, Mr. Olson, who's been helping me. Okay, so um, Clorox bleach this is my last question of the day, okay? Clorox bleach is what it says, trumpet tips, please. So my biggest trumpet tip for you is to spend more time buzzing, uh, buzzing exercises, both long tone exercises and up and down exercises. Where's my trumpet? Here it is. Um, so long tone buzzes and low to high, up and down. Buzzing, and then doing your uh, Hugo. I'm going to tell you about my next live stream in a minute, and then doing what we call lip slurs. So on on one fingering, that's called working on your flexibility. Okay, working on your your lip flexibility exercises. Google uh, Google um, lip slurs. 
exercises or lip flexibility exercises for trumpet, I'm sure you'll find some good stuff. Okay, everybody, uh, last question. I do not play the accordion. I wish I did. It's an awesome instrument. Okay, so folks, my next live stream is going to be in two weeks. Uh, we are, we'll be back in two weeks and maybe I'll, I'll send you guys a quick video from New Orleans when I'm there next weekend. Really looking forward to it. So guys, have a great week. I am heading back to school in, oh geez, maybe four, four weeks, less than a month. Um, I'm back at school. So, um, thanks you. Thank you all for checking in. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I will see you all next week. Make sure you practice and uh, have a good one, guys. Okay, Dennis, thank you for joining us once again. Thank you. Okay, thank you to Squidward for joining us. Folks, don't forget to practice. Save those questions. If I didn't get your question, I'm really sorry. Check in uh, at my next live stream. Okay, bye, guys.